On page 18 of your workbook is a synopsis of the signs of um, acute myocardial infarction. Let me just uh, bring up all these bullet points here. So when a patient has an acute myocardial infarct, it's an evolving process. So imagine this is your myocardium, and this is the area where you're having, let me redraw that, this is your myocardium. This is an area where you're having an infarct. If you were to look at that a little closer, what you would see is areas of tissue which are ischemic, and that might be represented by these um, deep, symmetrically inverted um, T waves here. And it's important that, number one, they're deep. Number two, that they are symmetrically inverted, as opposed to this kind of uh, T wave, where um, the initial phase is longer than the terminal phase. So that would not be considered symmetrical. This would. And we have to see that in two anatomically contiguous leads. What we also see is um, an acute myocardial infarct. You may not necessarily see inverted T waves in the acute MI, but uh, what you typically see is ST segment elevation. And uh, so here is the baseline, and here is the J point or the ST segment. So it's well above the baseline. Forgive me for not drawing a straight line there. And um, injury uh, is a word that describes cells. I'll just draw it here with pluses. Injury describes cells which um, are ischemic to the point where they're unable to regulate the flow of electrolytes across the cell membrane like they normally would. And... Um, the, the cells become increasingly permeable and they become edematous. So they start to fill with fluid and we see ST segment elevation above the baseline. Then over time what happens is if the, the cells continue to be ischemic and injured, um, that area becomes, they develop patchy areas of necrosis. And uh, so you might see blotches of necrotic tissue. And necrosis is um, reflected in ECG by these um, pathological Q waves. And the criteria for pathological Q waves is that they must be at least a millimeter wide, and the, the depth of the uh, Q wave must be 25% of the height of the R wave. That's a minimal criteria. And again, whether we're looking at symmetrically inverted T waves, ST elevation, or uh, pathological Q waves, we have to see it in at least two anatomically contiguous leads. The other thing you might see in a hyperacute MI or in an MI that's happening within the first, you know, 5 to 10, 15 minutes or something is something called hyperacute T waves. These are very tall rounded T waves as opposed to uh, the um, tall peak T waves that we see in hyperkalemia or high serum potassium. So these are tall and rounded and they present um, in, in a patient who has signs and symptoms consi consistent with acute MI uh, or consistent with cardiac ischemia. Um, so these would be hyperacute uh, T waves, and again, you'd have to see them in two anatomically t contiguous leads. So in this case, we'd actually have to see them in V3 and V4, because V3 and V4 are anatomically contiguous for the anterior leads. V1 and V2 are the septal leads. Now, in this particular case, we also happen to see ST segment elevation. So here's the baseline, and here's the J point roughly. Um, down here, here's the baseline, and uh, roughly there's the 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 J points. So uh, these are hypercute T waves, but we see ST elevation with those as well. Um, this is what you'll often see in an acute MI. Uh, you'll notice that there are no Q waves. We have a baseline here. We have J point here. So we have really marked ST elevation. No Q wave here. We have uh, baseline. We have elevated J point here. So we have um, injury pattern without evidence of necrosis, without uh, symmetrically inverted T waves, and this is typical of acute nuance at MI within the first hour to two hours or so, um, and, and this is quite significant. And um, so when you see ST elevation above uh, the, the baseline, um, that's indicative of injury. When we see symmetrically inverted uh, T waves, here's some samples of ischemia. Um, so we see inverted T waves in uh, 3 and AVF, that indicates some um, inferior wall ischemia. Subintercardial ischemia uh, is reflected in ST segment depression. So here's a baseline, here's the ST segment. Now, in order, there are a couple of dozen different causes of ST segment depression. In order to say definitively that this is subintercardial ischemia, one, we either have to see uh, a normal rhythm where the ST segment is at the baseline and then a tachycardic rhythm in the same patient where the ST segment sags below the baseline. We also have to see it in two anatomically contiguous leads, uh, or we have to know that their ECG prior to this event was normal. 